I'll be honest, I'm still hung up on the whole bear thing. Hey guys, I am Nova. Welcome back. It's another wonderful day. It's another day to do another wonderful video. And I've got myself... Well, I wouldn't say it's coffee, and this is not a hashtag ad, but I am Canadian. Uh, I've got this cup of sugar in me, and I'm willing, I'm ready to, to, to talk about some, some games. And so, let's talk about some games. Specifically, Baldur's Gate 3. There's a discussion that's cropped up here in the last few days uh, that was kicked off by a developer on Twitter. Uh, in regards to Baldur's Gate 3 being, I guess, of such scope and scale and quality that there's a concern that consumers are going to raise their expectations for games that follow Baldur's Gate 3 and that they're going to be the, uh, those expectations are going to be too high and that they should maybe temper their expectations for the sake of the developers. So let me just go over the original tweet here and we'll, we'll get some context and then I'll go over what my thoughts are uh, on that and hopefully not have this be a 50 minute video <laughs> like everything else. I can't, I can't be brief. So this started with uh, Xavier Nelson Jr. I probably butchered that name, I apologize, but uh, he said, Like a lot of people, I am deeply excited about what the lovely folks at Larian accomplished with Baldur's Gate 3, but I want to gently, preemptively push back against players taking that excitement uh, and using it to apply criticism or raised standard to RPGs going forward, and then went on to say that you can't separate a game from the process used to build it, so let's look at why Larian is taking into development, uh, or what Larian is taking into the development and final version of the game. So here's his bullet points that are supporting this whole idea. Uh, the dev cycle stretching back to 2017, so lengthy de dev, uh, dev time. Uh, two massive games and their definitive editions, worth of tech and institutional knowledge to draw from, which I would assume he's referring to Divinity 1 and 2, uh, or Original Sin 1 and 2. Uh, three, super successful early access period lasting three years, providing crucial community feedback, bug hunting, and cash flow for over 400 developers in seven different offices around the world, not including outsourcing partners. Five, the license, brand, and world of one of the largest entertainment IPs in the world in Dungeons & Dragons, at the apex of its popularity with the rise of the actual play movement and a movie. Of course, the Dungeons & Dragons movie, which I have seen, and it's pretty entertaining. Pretty good movie. Uh, so this is a small and incomplete list. Larian is coming into this game swinging with a gigantic weight of expectation to deal with but they're also doing it with an immense amount of wind, direct experience, plus resources, plus specialty tooling, etc, 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 at their backs. As a TLDR, in an era of mega games, Baldur's Gate 3 is one of the largest attempted, built by a specialized group of people using mature tech specially built to make this specific game, reinforced by invaluable mass player feedback and market validation ahead of its launch. This is not a new baseline for RPGs, this is an anomaly. Trying to do the same thing uh, in the same way, especially without the same advantages, would, uh, could kill an entire group of studios. If they go as big or bigger with their next title, Larian themselves could die. That's the risk and reward of the mega game. We are in an industry dangling elephants over cliffs, pointing at the ones that don't collapse under their own weight as indictments to the ones that do. So please celebrate the achievement represented by Baldur's Gate 3. It looks like a massive amount of effort is about to pay off in a big way for one of the brightest voices in the medium. But if you shout that every RPG should be like this going forward, you have no excuse. You've uh, not just missed the point, you've created the expectations and conditions to ensure your favorite creators may never be able to give you the thing you love ever again. So, that being said, that's the context to this whole discussion. And there have been other developers that have chimed in on this in various capacities, um, all of them pretty much in agreement with, with, with conceptually what was being discussed here in the various points, some focusing on more one, you know, singular points more than others, but nevertheless, agreement across the board. 
Uh, and so what do I think about this? Not that, uh, not that it's probably as valuable of an opinion as, say, some that are coming from some developers, but I also think that it's uh, at least a little bit valuable in that when it's coming from developers, uh, you know, they do have a little bit of, of, of self-preservation in mind, not in terms of, like, their jobs per se, but, uh, you know, just their, it is their, it is their life, and so, you know, they're, it's, when there are very lofty expectations put in front of you, sometimes it's, it's, it's comforting to remind yourself of all of the things that, that went into said thing that maybe you and your team did not have, you know, access to. And, and I think you get the idea. Um, so let me go through his bullet points, I guess, as a starter. And I'll get a white screen back up so I'm more lit <laughs> for you guys uh, here on camera. Uh, so let me just go through the bullet points one at a time and talk about these specifically. Long development cycle that started in 2017. I don't think this is necessarily specific to this game in, in a way that I think it, it bared individual calling out. But I think the idea uh, that, uh, that uh, one Mr. Nelson is getting at here is that it's a culmination of all these things. But I will talk about each one of them semi in a vacuum and then and then go from go from there because i do think that to a degree there's a number of these that don't even have to be in a vacuum that can still be applied to any development team big or small long development cycle that started back in 2017 this is one of those where where you know in general i think we're all getting used to the fact that older Older AAA games were a two to four year development cycle. Now we're looking at more like four to seven years uh, on some of these titles. I think four years is probably almost reasonable for a AAA game these days, but there are many that are like these monolithic games going out to seven years, like a Starfield or Baldur's Gate 3, etc. These standout uh, kind of titles uh, that not everyone gets that much time because time is money, but nevertheless, those are kind of greater standards now. I think it is also important to just point out as well that time and money and even even skill does not always a good game make. And I think we've seen lots of examples over time of that being the case. Does it set the stage for you to have a better opportunity? Sometimes that is absolutely true, but it is not a definitive answer to making a quality game that many people are going to buy and thus have you profit from your ventures. Two previous games in Divinity, Original Sin, and Original Sin 2 worth of tech and institutional knowledge to draw from. I think this is the most important point of the whole thing, is that I think that, I think that the majority of the success of this game is this. Everything else is nice, but everything is built off of this. Larian has been making essentially this type of game for a very long, like, in, like late 90s. Right? They've been doing this for a long time, and their more recent games of Original Sin and Original Sin 2, hugely successful, very well-made games that are essentially the building blocks for them to be able to dive into Baldur's Gate 3 with a huge head start, where another studio working on an RPG of this type might not have access to that kind of thing. And even more specific to that, of course, is the institutional knowledge from any of the retained employees and just processes that they have built up over time making these games that also lends itself to being able to scope up within reason as they did with, with Baldur's Gate 3. I think that's probably the, the biggest contributing factor above all. Successful early access period lasting uh, three years that provided Larian with community feedback, bug, hu bug hunting, and cash flow. This is another one that is available to everyone. And I would make the argument that indie developers and small teams have, have benefited more from early access than anyone else and so while this is certainly a factor for a large studio to do early access can be a double-edged sword much of the time because there is a bigger expectation of quality on a studio like this and to go into early access comes with some presumptions from consumers certainly and so to do a good early access is not common I think everyone knows this that's interacting with early access games. It is not exactly the standard that they are done well <laughs> to any capacity. So uh, this is not something that's unique to Larian or, or Baldur's Gate 3's development. Anyone could have done that, um, but they did it well. And that's the standout thing 
in, in that point. Huge team of over 400 developers across seven offices. This is another big one, obviously big in more than you know one way. Uh, and this comes from, again, being a successful developer for like going on 30 years. That's just going to happen over time. Not everyone has access to it. But again, what is it? Todd, God Howard, Mr. Todd himself in his friggin' beautiful leather bomber jacket walked out on stage that time and talked about Fallout 76 and how it was, it was the biggest project they'd ever done. 16 times the detail uh, on his lower back hair. You know, everything that they could throw at it, every studio for, like, I think he said every single branch of Bethesda was involved in making that game. And that is an enormous amount of, of people and resources. And we all know how Fallout 76 went, right? So again, not exactly something that guarantees success or even a good game. Can it help? Yes. Does it allow for certain levels of scope to happen in a shorter period of time on average if it's managed well versus a smaller team? Sure. But there are some asterisks to labeling that as some sort of like, you know, uh, but I do get it as, as part of the greater whole. The license for one of the largest entertainment IPs in Dungeons and Dragons, I think this is this is certainly, this is like the cherry on top, right? I mean, they had a r Original Sin 1 and 2, hugely successful. Uh, they could have named it, uh, continued that, that franchise on and had this much scope and, and attention, and it probably would have done uh, almost as well, in my estimation. Uh, is it nice that Dungeons and Dragons is coming to a head right now? Sure, but they signed up for this shit back when Dungeons and Dragons wasn't popping off like it is now. So that was a gamble back then. And it just so happened to be, you know, coming to a head. But do I think that that's the reason that this game is going to be like, you know, the greatest thing ever in the genre? No, it's just, it's helpful that it is a known quantity. Uh, but I think it's more importantly coming from Larian who has enormous amount of, of, uh, uh, of trust built up in this community, in this genre. That's worth way more. So these are interesting points. And as, and as a whole, you can see, you know, the, not very many studios have all of that come together at the same time. You have access to some of these, and I would posit that the majority of them people can access as developers these days. Um, but not, on, but not even the ones that are specific to, more specific to the situation guarantee a good game outcome on the other side. So while I agree with the idea uh, in, in theory, I think in practice it starts to fall apart for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the expectation being put on consumers, the average consumer, to check their expectations you know, they say, okay, well, here's this amazing game that came out and you loved it and it's incredible, uh, but don't expect other games to also come to meet it. You can't, you can't expect them to not shift their expectations. Once you've, once you've tasted that, it's hard to go back, right? It's like somebody that's, you know, that's never had a great pair of headphones and a good audio source before, and they've been using nothing but Apple, like, earbuds or, or something, and then they finally get, like, a good pair of headphones and, and good uh, audio source, and they hear it, and it's really hard to go back. Um, or, or, you know, there, but there are, many, there are many different ways in which, you know, you can, uh, you can, you can use that, that type of analogy. Uh, so you can't expect consumers in the market to, to, to bow to that. More specifically, when having this type of discussion, you know, the average consumer is not, they're not getting this. They're not part of this discussion, and they don't really care. What do they care about? Is the game good? Have I heard that the game is good? And can I afford the game? <laughs> that's kind of, that's it. That's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's like the holy trinity for most consumers right there. It does not go beyond that. So, uh, so you're, you're, you know, you're not, you're kind of screaming or you're talking to a wall in, in, in large part here. You're only going to catch a few people that are in a group, they are those who are maybe watching this video here and some of the people that interact in social media, but that does not represent that big of a group uh, in the grand scheme of things. So that breaks down a little bit. The argument breaks down a little bit in that regard. So I think it's also important to look at this discussion from, from you know, how does, it, how does it appear that the developers that have weighed in on this, how does it appear that they are, that they are um, 
you know, how they're joining this discussion and how they seemingly are looking at this launch of, of, of Baldur's Gate 3 in regard to the broader industry, their own work, or the, the work of others. Uh, and what does that ultimately mean for consumers on the internet? Because that does end up affecting, to a degree, what consumers end up getting and, uh, and could create perhaps a bit of a, of a negative feedback loop between the developers and, and consumers a, you know, at the end of the day. So let, uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, about, uh, about that as well. The expectations part, though, on developers, assuming the, the, the player knows about it, Nobody is going to expect a, a team of 10 people to, on average, outdo a team of 1,000 people, uh, all else being equal. People aren't unreasonable in that regard, but the majority of people don't really necessarily know that's the case. They just, they just is game good, is game not good, right? Uh, and, and for the people that do know, the, the level of do I care about that Re, you know, it, it, or, or do I, do I, uh, how, how much empathy do I have goes down the larger the studio gets. So, you know, you, you're, you're, even though you're, even if you were able to preach to the choir on this one, like the market of, of or the, the group of people that are truly going to get behind you on this in a meaningful way, not that many, not that many people. So how do I see, or what are, what are my concerns about, about how I see, what, or what I think about developers talking about this game the way that they are? Because even if it's not intentional, and I doubt it is, many of the responses to this from other developers, and even this original thread, read to me like a backhanded compliment to Larian Studios uh, at the end of the day, and a bit of a, let me come up with a bunch of excuses as to why I think you know, uh, games shouldn't be, consumers shouldn't expect games to continue to, you know, to match or meet to match or, or move to match or et cetera, et cetera. Um, because it does, it, it seems like a backhanded compliment because it's like, here, let me give Larian their flowers, but then let me give you a list of reasons why this only happened for them and, and, and make it, and it makes it sound like it was serendipitous or it was luck or whatnot, and, um, uh, or, or it was in large, in large part in due to, to luck or a perfect storm where they had, yeah, they had the skill and the years of, of experience, but then also all of this stuff over here that just so happened to line up for them, uh, and not that they mostly engineered basically all of that over time. It's, it's kind of a backhanded compliment. In that regard, and my concern is also that uh, is that they're using. I'm seeing developers that almost want to get excusey about not chasing after these things uh, to try and, and meet to match. It's it typically it can it can be stressful, but it should be exciting when somebody pushes the medium forward in some way, shape, or form, and then everyone now has a new target to chase after. And this happened a million times over the over the years in in all mediums, whether it's film, music, books whatever that always happens right and there's always going to be people that say oh well the only reason that this happened is because it was all these things came together and i uh, you know we can't possibly do that and so you know don't expect it to happen and like oh well okay well then make go make your shit game you're telling us it's going to be shit or it's not going to be as good so like uh, why do i want to buy your game anymore if you don't even think you're going to be able to uh to 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 uh, at least attempt to meet to match it uh, and 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 do it well Right? Because the expectation isn't necessarily that you're going to make exactly Baldur's Gate 3. But, like, let's get some examples. Like, Myst back in the day was largely the reason why computers, uh, personal computers, moved to have CD-ROM drives. And then everyone else had to, had, you know, started to, to follow suit. Or uh, Goldeneye on the N64, proving that first-person shooters were totally viable on a console, even in multiplayer. Even though the multiplayer was, like, two months before the launch of the game. Got that in. Right, or let's say, um, uh, Halo to, to stick with console uh, FPSs. Halo, Halo Two. Halo was originally going to be a a, a uh, an RTS, but then oh well, last second change to FPS, and then it like redefined once again from GoldenEye, took the torch on, and then beyond that, Halo Two, then built off of that to to launch an entire online platform known as Xbox Live. And completely shifted expectations again. And then Halo 3, once again, with the Forge mode, we just like, kept going and going and going. And so there's like people will always like look at it in a vacuum 
um, or, or say, well, it's only because these things happened before, but that's the whole point, right? Is that they didn't just go out and do the final thing. Everyone's going to be, do- and, and it's not just one person on a hill in the industry just perpetually doing, uh, in, in every example, uh, everyone has to like strive for something. So, or another example in RPGs, uh, let's say Mass Effect with Bioware, where they had uh, a, a big jump from Knights of the Old Republic to Mass Effect in terms of their narrative delivery or their dialogue delivery uh, and their tree, the, the, the branching paths and in, 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 in the game, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all defined and created a new expectation for that genre, and everyone's been been coming up to 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 meet and exceed that. And people do the same chasing the dragon of Bethesda open world RPGs. You know, two worlds might have got ahead of themselves and they were like, yeah, we're the Oblivion Killer. I'm pretty sure it was two worlds. <laughs> but nevertheless, you know, you're, you, you, everyone's striving for something. And the important thing is you're striving for it. But managing your time and money that you do have available to you and your skills, managing that as best as you can and producing really good games. That's it. There are lots of games that are small that are really good and make lots of money. So don't just be like, well, you know, not everything is going to be Baldur's Gate 3. Like, don't say that because it just sounds like you're just giving up on shit. Just, just say, congratulations to Larian. Can't wait. You know, can't wait to see uh, what this game inspires other developers to do in the future. Boom. Done. Walk away. Don't immediately be like, oh, well, fuck me. I mean, they had... They had, you know, uh, the institutional knowledge and the platform built off of it, and they did a really great, uh, you know, early access, and and uh, they managed to get their hands on the Dungeons and Dragons thing, and it just so happens that they did a great, you know, movie, and it's in the it's in the general public, the, the zeitgeist, and all the stuff's coming, and all, and that's why it's so big. And nobody else will be ever be able to, like, don't, like, don't, don't go there. Just congratulate them for doing it because they pretty much engineered this themselves. And which is something that developers should be heartened by and use as a blueprint or, or not, not to follow it di- or directly, but to know that it's possible, right? And not just have to chase after, you know, the live service models and all this other stuff per se. So just, you know, be heartened by it. Don't be discouraged by it. And then start these conversations where you're putting a ceiling on the industry even though somebody's already clearly broken outside of the mold without, you know, without just having a windfall placed in front of them. They didn't just trip over and fall into Baldur's Gate 3, which is how all this ends up kind of sounding like, even though they, they preface with, you know, congratulating them, which is why I said before, it sounds like a backhanded compliment. So I think that's, I think that's a bad way to, to, to look at things. And I think that hurts consumers more than consumer expectations, which you can't, you're like, Shifting consumer expectations is very difficult. It's, it's, you know, anything cultural is kind of like its own thing. And, you know, a lot of money is spent in media markets to, to try and, and, and force them in certain ways and, uh, and, and move them in others. And the odds that, that you're going to be able to convince people to, uh, on a basis of quality and scale specifically in gaming which are two major aspects or, 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 or two major uh, parts of, of, of value propositions for games to be like, oh, okay, well, don't expect them and don't expect anyone else. Maybe don't do that. Just make some good games. People just want some good games. But I guess I'll leave it at that. Uh, and, and just say once again, if you're a developer out there and you're just getting started, be heartened by this. This is fantastic i mean just all the all the props in the world to uh to larian for for their entire journey to get to this point is is pretty spectacular and good on them for doing a good early access when it's not done very often and uh and and really this is a monolithic undertaking that uh that is one for the ages and i think it should be a a point of of encouragement instead of one of of kind of like dissecting it as some sort of like you know, Frankenstein happenstance type thing. I just think that's it's kind of a poisonous, a poisonous mindset. Let me know what you guys think in the con uh, in the comment section below. Uh, I'd love to to know your thoughts on this. 
Uh, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in uh, and uh, if there's something to talk about uh, there further. Let me know if you uh, like these types of videos. I know they can be a little long in the tooth, but uh, but that's just... I, it's so hard for me to be brief. I just can't seem to do it. Uh, thank you once again for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. And until then, stay safe out there. And peace! <laughs>